Hi everybody, welcome back to another technical demo around the Quarkus application. In this demo, I'm going to showcase how to deploy MicroSweeper Quarkus application on Azure Kubernetes Services, aka AKS. Let's get started. Okay, uh, this is uh, how do we uh, deploy this application. About uh, that, we're going to actually uh, three step to go through uh, deploy and build the application, a MicroSweeper application from my local environment, Edge developer environment, and I'm going to deploy this application to AKS Edge production. As you can see, uh, we're going to test the Quarkus application locally with the dev services, which allows me to stand up automatically uh, the PostSQL database, which he aims to synchronize the same data stack uh, from local and production. Once I'm verified my application functionality, my local environment, uh, we're going to deploy the application with the multiple Quarkus extension, for example, Quarkus uh, Kubernetes extension, and then uh, Quarkus Kubernetes config extension, which allows me to deploy uh, this application, including containerized image and the push that image into uh, the external container registry, for example, the Azure container registry or QA.io, Docker Hub, whatever you need. And in the end, the, the last uh, step, uh, we're going to secure database credential, uh, which allows Kubernetes application, uh, which is Quarkus, uh, to access directly database. So normally, you can save your database credential, which is uh, username and password into your the uh, local file system or like a specific metadata. However, this is not a good example or a practice with the Kubernetes uh, environment. So because Kubernetes also uh, provides uh, Kubernetes resources to secure the sensitive information, which is a Kubernetes secret. You can also uh, save your computation data with a Kubernetes config. The benefit of Kubernetes resources it allows uh, automatically attach or detach that resources whenever you scale out uh, the application and the scale in. So this is a make your microservice application as a Kubernetes enabled microservice application. Okay, this is my application. I already uh, cloned uh, my existing Git repository, which have uh, this single microservice application. And then the micro sweeper actually it's on Minesweeper with a backend Windows 1995, like a uh, Windows gaming. So if you have uh, some experience a uh, Windows Windows operating system user, and then like a decade ago, you are so familiar with this game programming. And then the one of the interesting part of this application actually we edited uh, Quarkus uh, Java application as a backend. So whenever you play the, the mind game. And it automatically stores the, your username and uh, your score in the backend uh, database. So, uh, Quark is actually a backend application. Here's the rest of API, like API scoreboard, and then uh, retrieve old data, and then uh, store new data, and then maybe delete old data, just like a crowd capability on your application, which is cool. And here's the service for CDI bin. And then uh, you can uh, store data specifically uh, in the case in production model, you need to uh, trace the data, which is we use a micrometer. And then here's the Java entity data using uh, Panache entity, uh, Quarkus provide. And then this is a super, a super simple to store the application. And then uh, just to look at that application properties, uh, we don't have any uh, keys and value at this moment uh, for the local environment. This uh, super simple for developer to stand up uh, dev services in the end. The Palm XML, you can see the Quarkus version uh, to 13. You can also find out uh, Quarkus extension already pulled on your local file system. For example, the JWC PostSQL, which allows me to access to my database uh, PostSQL. Hibernate or Panache is uh, provide the fundamental operation. For example, you don't need to specify what implement get a setter and then like retrieve data, and then find by ID. The fundamental operation is all already uh, defined and implemented by uh, Hibernate or and Panache, which is really helpful for developer reduce to developing the fundamental operation in the end based on active record pattern. And then Micrometer to trace your application, and then JSONB, and Prometheus, as well as its fundamental stuff. I mean, you can actually skip it if you don't need it to trace your application. I just run Docker process, which is uh, better why I don't have any running uh, Docker process at this moment. So the next step, I'm going to run Quarkus demo. You can use maybe command line or Gradle, and I'm going to use Quarkus CLI, which 
uh, which is my preferred way. And then when you run the uh, Quark step mode, and you can see the PostSQL database and test containers automatically stand up based on dev services in Quarkus, which is super cool for developer. You don't need to use Docker CLI or Docker file or Docker Compose to connect to your local uh, PostSQL database, which is really cool. Okay. So when you just uh, press W from your dev mode, it automatically uh, stand up your the endpoint like a welcome page. But in this case, the index HTML, which is your the mind sweeper application. I just just tweak the micro sweeper because this is a microservice. So we're gonna end up with deploying this application into Kubernetes. So let's try to play a few times the gaming, and then I tr I'm not gonna grab the mind sweeper game. By the way. Okay, I just fail and score 17. And then the random username just generated and then like a four seizure and the three I scores I got I got that. And I can also uh, retrieve a RESTful API to get the score data here. You can see uh, three data like a seizure and a four and a blossom. Just like uh, I saw in the uh, a graphical UI, which is really cool. So I just verify my application, my local with Quarkus dev services and Quarkus demo. Now I'm going to try to deploy this application to the Kubernetes as a second step. In order to do that, I'm going to try to add Kubernetes extension and a container image zip. The container image zip allows me to uh, containerize this application, uh, my container image, my locally, and then deploy it to Kubernetes uh, uh, with the reporting that uh, container image. In order to that, I'm going to add, the first of all, I'm going to add the database configuration, which is actually real database in the production environment. You can see the database uh, kind of the PostSQL. So you can uh, set it up the multiple database like PostSQL, MongoDB, or Oracle database, or uh, MS SQL server, a bunch of stuff you can actually uh, edit it. Uh, here's the DB, uh, database username password. I just set it up a static code, your Quarks and MicroSQL database, which actually I'm going to uh, create a new database in uh, Azure Cloud user Azure PostSQL database. I also added to the AKS configuration because the application deployed to Kubernetes and then I'm going to set it up service type is a load balancer because I need to access that a uh, micro sweeper uh, GUI using uh, IP address by external, like my local. So that's why I say the local ba load balancer, which is the default is uh, this cluster IP. If you don't set it up the load balancer, which is just uh, created the service as default, the cluster IP, which only available inside the cluster, not external uh, users. And the last configuration container image build. So when I build this application like an artifact like a jar with a Maven command line or a red module or a Quark CLI, and then it automatically uh, containerizes this application as a container image. And then you can satisfy which external container registry you're gonna push this image in the end. So I'm gonna use the Quay.io. You can also uh, use any other uh, container registry like uh, Azure Container Registry, or Docker Hub, or any other container registry you can use. And the image group, which is your username on your query.io. And then last thing is the container image name tag, just like whatever you want to use that. And the one thing you need to do, make sure your container image is accessible publicly and the AKS as well. Okay, I'm going to change my group name, which is my here, the query.io, my username, Daniel030. Let's just copy and then just to paste to here, the group name. And then everything is okay. Okay, I'm, I'm going to try to build this application, a uh, Quarkus build command line, and I just give you need task. I uh, uh, try to register my demo time. Okay, it takes a few seconds or minutes, depends on the, how much you uh, implement your application. As you can see, you know, just containing me just created, and then I just try to using the Docker image. Now you can see a new container image I uh, just created on my local environment. And then when you go to target and Kubernetes directory, it automatically generate a Kubernetes resources file, JSON and YAML, which uh, you can use and uh, run this YAML or JSON directly your remote Kubernetes. You can see there are uh, mandatory uh, resources generated like a service and a load balancer type, which already set it up. And then deployment, 
uh, is how to deploy and which uh, container image you're going to repair as you can see you're going to use the query that I my username and then microsuper quarkus aks 1.0 this is I'm going to use that so so first of all, I'm going to push this container image to my Quader IO using Docker push. And then back to the, my application. Now you can see new image just uh, pushed it. And then when you go to the image in the Quader.io, default container image is a private. So I'm going to try to uh, make this application publicly accessible. Just click on make public, which allows me to make this uh, container image uh, is accessible by anyone. Okay, it depends on what kind of external container registry you're going to use. Okay, here's my Kubernetes service in Azure Cloud, like my AKS cluster. I already created that kind of stuff. It's pretty easy. First of all, you're going to have your proper subscription to create the AKS services. And then I uh, try to use my own subscription and the resource group. Then this is an overview. You can see the uh, resource group, AKS that's GRP, and the Kubernetes version 123.8, and there are some a bunch of stuff. So now I'm going to try to uh, export the environment variable from my local uh, to run AZ command line. So first of all, AKS name, my AKS cluster, and the resource group, AKS uh, GRP. You're going to set up your own uh, AKS service name and resource group before you run this kind of stuff. And then I'm going to just using uh, AC command line to access from the Azure Kubernetes services from my local environment, like Azure AKS, get credential uh, with their resource name AKS. Now I can just access to my AKS cluster using Kubes auto command line. The Kubes auto create the namespace, microsuper quarkus is a new namespace. And then try to get part with the dev namespace, so there's nothing in there. All right, so let's try to create a PostSQL database uh, in production environment. So you can have multiple choices to create an Azure database for PostSQL. So let's try to create a just single server uh, for this demo. But in the reality, in the production, maybe you can have a maybe a flexible database here. So using the same group in the server name, uh, microsuper database and the admin username Quarkus and my password just I set it on my local environment like a Quarkus application properly. And then it just deploy a couple of minutes. I'm gonna make it a little bit fast to showcase the end of the end. And then go to return and you can see the uh, server name and the username and then the password. And then you can make sure accessible to Azure services here. So I'm gonna to try to click on yes. And then save the configuration. It takes a moment to update the configuration. Now I'm going to try to go back my local environment and try to create a new uh, uh, database, like a score. We're going to use uh, that database schema uh, from my Quarkus application and a micro sweeper, just like my local environment, using the AZ command line. And you can actually uh, run this command line from your cloud shell in Azure Cloud as well. So as a, a PostSQL database created the same resource name and the, the database name is a Microsoft database. I just created, you can actually open uh, uh, Cloud Shell in, in the end. So I'm going to try to deploy my application under the target directory, the Kubernetes YAML file into the new namespace microsuper quarkers It takes a few seconds and then you can see uh, all uh, resources to in the namespace. Here is my service with the external IP based on load balancer. And then the uh, actual pod is running. And then the deployment is just completed. So let's try to uh, find out, take a look at that logs and pod in the, if the Quarkus is actually uh, running uh, properly. You can see, uh, yeah, I just, uh, just missed the namespace here. If you set it up a uh, default context name on your, your Kubernetes code, and then you don't need it to append the uh, namespace every single time. So, so you can see the Quarkus logs is Quarkus running uh, properly. Let's try to open a new web browser to access to external IP address. But for that, uh, I just open Cloud Shell in the Azure uh, uh, web console to access the database directly uh, right on day. So when you go access the PostSQL with the uh, Azure PostSQL database with the name uh, password, and then you can see the score, there's nothing in there. And then when you run Quarkus application, it automatically create a new data schema as database as well as 
uh, data automatically, just like my local environment using quark stable services. Let's try to play us a couple of times, like a just first username, like a chatter. And the second, uh, the username, uh, twisty with the score three. And the uh, lapis, the last username, and then I just got score nine. And then when you rerun the uh, select uh, SQL command line in the cloud share, you can do the same score data on your cloud share when you directly access the database. So now I just verify my application totally working, just like my local, but is uh, AKS and Azure PostSQL database. Now, what I'm going to do the next step and the last step, I'm going to secure my DB credential to access the database from my Quarkus application. In order to do that, I'm going to try to add one more Kubernetes uh, related extension on my Quarkus, which is a Kubernetes dash config, which allows me to access directly Kubernetes config and secret. And now I'm going to try the new secret data using kubectl. Uh, like a generic data DB credentials and then the username and just like we are using the current database username and password the same thing Just using the cubes color and the our namespace like a microsweeper dash quarkus And then let's go back to my application and then first of all I'm going to try to update the database generation because we already create a bunch of data like a three records I'm not going to delete it and drop it and then I just keep using that so that's why I changed the strategy update and then I changed the image like a 1.0 on uh, this is a new image and then I'm going to change it the uh, username password value of it just like a power uh, the new Kubernetes secret uh, keys. And then the last thing is uh, to enable Kubernetes secret for my job application, which is a two simple keys like a Quarkus Kubernetes config secret enable true and secret uh, reality secret in DB credential. Just a few lines is allows to use Quarkus Kubernetes from my local to remote Kubernetes resources, which is really super cool and easy. Let's try to rebuild, compile my application using Quarkus CLI. Uh, and then in this case, we it automatically generate a new container image tag 1.1, just like we set it up the uh, application properly. And then just new generated a Kubernetes YAML file, you can see the 1.1 new image. Just make sure you will, we're gonna use the 1.1 image. And then let's try to uh, create two. There are several ways to update existing running Kubernetes uh, the pod. For example, you can access uh, specify like one YAML file to order to replace a specific element of your YAML file. For example, here is the patch from YAML file the empty. I'm going to just set it up uh, the new image tag here, and then I'm going to use the Quarkus uh, the Kubernetes code which allows me to just redeploy and patch the existing application. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna uh, push a new container uh, image like a 1.0 uh, to uh, my Quay.io container registry. And then as you can see, I'm gonna reload. And then now you can see 1.1. 1.1 uh, 1 .1 is a new container image. It's a uh, push to into my Quay.io. So in the next step, I'm going to use uh, Cube's Kodo patch uh, deployment with a new uh, YAML file, which is just a replace a new container image tag. Pretty simple, uh, just a new patch, and then take a look at that uh, pod data, and then a new pod is running up, and then you can check it up, the logs, uh, the park is uh, running properly. You can see there's no error, and then the application is running as a production mode. Okay, let's go back to uh, like a super UI and a refresh, and then you can see your uh, readable, the data still existing, not gonna delete it, which is really cool. And then, but uh, your micro sweeper, the uh, gaming pad is just reset. Let's try to give it a one more time. And then I just say the play uh, pretty much better. Uh, I got a score three with the username yellow arm. And then when you go back to uh, the Azure Cloud Shell and then try to uh, retrieve the data directly post SQL. Now you can see new data yellow arm is just edited. In the meantime, so my Quarkus application actually access to database with the DB credential with a uh, from Kubernetes to secret rather than my local file system uh, inside of my application. So this is a make your application microservices application as Kubernetes neighbor 
application in the end. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and have a good rest of the day.